Hello everybody, welcome to an in-depth analysis of the new SpaceX crane, the Lipha 11000. This video will build upon the previous one, in which I introduced you to the very basic features of this new crane and how it compares to the Lipha 11350 aka Franken crane. This, however, will be a much more detailed analysis. We will dive into the raw numbers as you will get to know this new crane much more closely. It is a lot to cover, so I decided to split the information into two videos, which will form a mini-series. The main reason for this is that I don't do this full-time, and I don't want to have you waiting for two weeks until a new video drops. This will be part one, in which you will learn almost everything about the superstructure and chassis of the crane, from its shoe size to how many joysticks there are in the cabin. We will also have a look at the different measurements including weights, while at the same time comparing them to those of Franken crane so that you can get a better overview. Booms, jibs, winches, wire ropes, hooks and much more will be thoroughly covered in the second part of this series. Let us begin at the bottom of the Lipha 11000, namely with the chassis. At the very bottom there are two crawler carriers, which you could also describe as the feet of the crane. These are covered with crawler plates, also known as crawler shoes, which normally are 2 meters wide, although they are also available in an optional 2.4 meters wide version. For comparison, Franken Crane's optional wider version is 2.5 meters wide. In terms of height, the crawlers rise as high as 2.47 meters in the normal configuration and 2.52 meters in the wider version. With Franken Crane, the crawler's height remains at 2.5 meters in both configurations. With shoes on, the crawlers boast 12.44 meters of length, a bit over half a meter less than Franken Crane's crawlers. The distance between the outer edges of both crawlers is 11.2 meters in the normal version or 11.6 meters in the wider shoe version, making it almost a meter and a half more compact than Franken Crane, which features 13 meters of distance between both outer edges. This is a feature that will undoubtedly come in handy at Starbase, given how crowded it can get. And now to the best part. Guess how much these things weigh? Oh, and by the way, all weights will be given in metric tons. For reference, one metric ton equals roughly 1.1 US tons. The crawler alone, without the shoe, weighs 31 metric tons, the normal 2 meter wide shoe weighs 29 tons, whereas the wider 2.4 meter shoe adds another 7 tons to the mixture, totaling in a 36 ton shoe, indeed a very heavy shoe. Put together, one whole crawler weighs 60 tons, 67 tons for the wider version. So that's 120 or 134 tons worth of crawlers alone, which amounts to about 25 average male African elephants, females weight less, and you may think that that's a lot of weight, but then Franken Crane comes along and says, hold my crawlers. Yep. That's right, the almighty Franken crane has some serious feet down there, even more massive than those on our new crane. Take a look at this. Without shoe, each crawler weighs 38.5 tons. In the normal configuration, each shoe weighs 31.5 tons, making a total of 70 tons per crawler. However, the wider version totals at 83.5 tons for a single crawler, since the 2.5 wide shoe weighs a whopping 45 tons, 13 and a half more tons than the smaller version. Added together, Franken Crane boasts 140 to 167 tons worth of crawlers, 20 to 30 tons heavier than the crawlers of the new crane. Finally, both cranes feature extensible feet. On Franken Crane, these feet extend toward the front of the crane with a 7 meter gap between them, whereas on the new crane, they extend toward the side with a 3.25 meters gap between them. Alright, continuing further up, we encounter the center section of the chassis, which sits on the crawlers. On the LR11000, aka the knee crane, this section is divided into two pieces, 
consisting of a middle section on top of which sits a rotating mechanism featuring three rotating gears. The middle section is 8.65 meters long, 3.5 meters wide, 3.06 meters high and weighs 40 tons whereas the rotating system is 4.3 meters wide, 1.9 meters high and weighs 27.2 tons. Together the center section of the new crane totals 3.5 meters in height and 67.2 tons of weight. This option includes a quick connection system, there is also another version without the quick connection system that weighs only 60 tons. Franken crane was built a little bit differently, the whole center section is smaller, weighing 43 tons and sits on two cross beams of 45 tons each that are attached to the crawler carriers. Now we arrive at the upper section of the chassis, also known as the superstructure. Franken Crane's superstructure is divided into two main pieces, a rotating platform with a removable frame and winch number 4, I will talk about the winches more in depth in the next video, measuring 14.8 meters in length, 3.1 meters in height, 3.3 meters in width and a whole 44 tons in weight. It also features a machine room with walkway and cabin, measuring 12.3 meters in length, 2.5 meters wide, 2.8 meters high and 17.6 tons heavy. By contrast, the new LR11000 features a one-piece superstructure, that is, the rotating platform and the machine room with walkway and cabin are just one piece ready to be mounted, making the mounting and transporting logistics easier and cheaper. And just like with Franken Crane, it also features the removable frame, including winch number 4. Put together, this whole superstructure measures 17.7 meters in length, 3.5 meters in width, 3.36 meters in height, and a total of 78 tons in weight, over 16 tons heavier than Franken Crane's superstructure. The central ballast, that is the weight extra added between the crawlers, amounts to 90 tons, divided up into two brackets at 5 tons each, plus 8 ballast plates at 10 tons each. There is an option to add 40 tons more of central ballast if so desired. The total counterweight on the back of the superstructure is 250 tons divided up into another two brackets of 5 tons each and 24 plates of 10 tons each. The whole superstructure stands 8 meters tall, measured from the ground to the upper part of the last ballast plate. For comparison, Franken Crane had a much lower central ballast, amounting to no more than 30 tons with no option to increase it. Its counterweight on the superstructure was 340 tons, divided up into two brackets of 10 tons each, plus 32 plates at 10 tons each. The superstructure stands 9.5 meters tall, one and a half more than the new crane. The crane control system is the same on both cranes. All crane movements are initiated by means of two four-way joystick hand levers and two two-way hand foot levers. All working movements are independently controllable. Both cranes have a total of five cameras inside their cabins, two of which are color screens, whereas the other three cameras are for the different winches and the rear area. And how fast can the new LR11000 perform a full 360 degree turn, you may ask? Well actually not even one turn per minute, but almost. More specifically 0.89 turns in one minute, which equal to 320 degrees turned in 60 seconds. Franken Crane was a bit slower with 0.82 turns per minute or 295 degrees. And surprisingly, both cranes cannot travel that fast. However, the new crane wins the race with 1.41 km an hour of maximum speed since Franken Crane can only reach 1.08 km an hour of travel speed. Finally, the big two questions in everybody's mind, how much does this thing weight and cost? Well, I haven't been able to find a full average weight for the crane just yet, however, I can give you a rough estimate of how much the chassis alone weighs, including superstructure. On its heaviest configuration, including heavier center blast and the counterweight, the chassis weighs about 660 metric tons, which equals to 727 US tons. For the next part of this mini-series, I will try and come up with a rough weight estimate for the whole crane, 
but it's proven to be difficult. In terms of money, the only thing that I could find is the second hand price of a couple of LR1750 which could be described as the next weaker sibling of the LR11000 and this bad boy is selling for prices in the vicinity of 4 million US dollars with over 4800 hours on its back already. Year of manufacture 2014 so it's a relative new crane so for a brand new crane that is more powerful than this one I would say maybe six to seven millions not counting the transport from Germany to Texas or maybe 10 million I don't know what are your estimations all right everybody thank you for making it to the end of this video I hope that you could learn a lot of new things about the new LR11000 and the old LR11350 aka Franken Crane. In the next chapter of this mini series I will carry on with the booms, jibs and what combinations of these two SpaceX used with Franken Crane as well as the possible combinations they could use in the new crane. As I mentioned at the beginning of the video we will also delve into hook blocks, pulleys, the exact thickness of the wire ropes and much more. So I hope to see you there again. I will also try and answer any questions that you may have, so make sure to write them down in the comment section. Other than that, I wish you a very nice day, whatever you are, and see you soon. Bye bye.